Without warning today, President Obama decided to blow open the argument about race and bias in America, calling on the nation to do some soul searching. And six days after the verdict, getting personal and saying he could have been Trayvon Martin. Afterwards, people across the country posted these images side by side. And now ABC's Jim Avila has this seismic moment at the White House today. Reporters scramble. The half-empty White House press room jolted by a rare surprise visit from the President of the United States. You think anybody else is showing up? After talking to his wife, Michelle, and calling senior staff into the Oval Office, the president decided late yesterday to speak from the heart today about the case of Trayvon Martin. When uh, Trayvon Martin was first shot, uh, I said that this could have been my son. Uh, another way of saying that is uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me 35 years ago. In highly personal remarks, equal parts president and law professor, but mostly African-American male, Barack Obama reminded the country why the Zimmerman verdict cut so deeply in the black community. The African-American community is looking at this issue through uh, a set of experiences and a, and a history that doesn't go away. There are very few African-American men in this country who haven't had the experience of being followed when they were shopping in a department store. That includes me. Obama did not challenge the verdict, but did talk about how life experiences make African Americans question whether they are treated equally in the eyes of the law. And that all contributes, I think, to a sense that if a white male teen was involved in the same kind of scenario, that from top to bottom, uh, both the outcome uh, and the aftermath might have been different. The president suggesting more could be done. Police training to avoid racial bias. A review of stand your ground laws the administration says may promote rather than prevent gun violence. And the bolstering of the self-esteem of young black men. And then finally, uh, I think it's going to be important for all of us to do some soul searching. In the end, President Obama went personal again. Heartened by the racial progress he sees from his daughter's generation. You know, when I talk to Malia and Sasha, and I listen to their friends, and I see them interact, uh, they're better than we are. Finally invoking the they're Constitution itself, as the nation continues a 230-year struggle with diversity. You know, we're becoming a, a more perfect union, not a perfect union. The president came to the press room carrying only notes, no script, there was no teleprompter. His aides say he was speaking from the heart. We know at least he was speaking off the cuff. Diane? White House correspondent Jim Avila reporting in tonight. Thank you, Jim. And as we said, we wanted to take a closer look at questions of race and bias in America. And ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas has that. The last image of Trayvon Martin was of him buying tea and candy. And minutes later, when George Zimmerman saw him, he was committing no crime. Many African Americans believe he was racially profiled. Today, the nation's first African American president talked about the indignity of being profiled. And it got personal. He made it clear it's happened to him. There are very few African American men in this country who haven't had the experience of being followed when they were shopping in a department store. That includes me. The slights are daily, and they don't go away, the president said, telling the country that African Americans are looking at the Trayvon Martin shooting through a different lens. Many African Americans believe Martin was singled out because of his race, and as a consequence, died because of his race. I don't want to be like Trayvon Martin's mom, burying my child. When we talked to middle-class African American mothers last year in the wake of Martin's shooting, they told us they worried about their sons being unjustly targeted and that they had to teach their boys how not to be profiled. I tell them always you have to keep your hands out of your pocket because people will perceive that as threatening or they may think that you've stolen something. It's a long-standing problem. In 1991, ABC News conducted an experiment where we sent a black man and a white man into a record store. The black man was followed by the store clerk. The white man was ignored. And it's still happening. Racine's honor student son talked about being feared, 
prejudged. Sometimes when I'm riding the metro, like I'll come, I'll walk right by somebody and they'll kind of like tighten up. Today, Racine reacted to George Zimmerman's acquittal. Sad, heartbroken. And this image circulating on the internet is asking a profound question. Would things have been different if Trayvon Martin were white and George Zimmerman black? Tomorrow, expect major demonstrations across the country. Diane. Pierre Thomas, thank you so much. Now the president in this fray.